on the last episode of Web Life Atlanta. Oh, I get the text from Mikey, and he's telling me about a slumber party pajama party. So was I not invited? So I guess Mikey calls us up trying to get us together or whatnot, but you know, in classic fashion of, you know, me, I have to make an interest, but you didn't invite me. And I have uh, not I everybody watching. I some pajamas myself from Lusted by Armani, you know, a real Asian mix, silk looking outfit. I feel like I was the best dressed guy there. Oh. To just introduce anybody and everybody I know to my man. Um, so I appreciate you for coming. And this night um, is actually secretly dedicated oh, yeah, to you. The psychic in the back, everybody was laughing, having a good time, and then. <laughs> and immediately I see um, a gargoyle. Hey! Hey, what's up? <laughs> At the time, it seemed like a good idea. So you have no issue with the fact that he used to date Mikey and they live together? That ain't been a problem for you? I mean... Yeah, I didn't know Brandon was boyfriend. I saw him fight, fight, fight. She's so upset, so I don't know. That's what went up in here. I'm here, you know, Sean here. I'm like, oh, okay. We start vibing again, and then... Kaboom! Because I don't know what's going on. I decided to invite Mikey over to Sean's place um, where they can go ahead and try to hash this shit out. So, you know, Mikey's on his way here. Right. So we can go ahead and knock that situation out. Mm -hmm. And the only way that that can happen is if they do it face to face. Because I want you guys to be cool. And I just want to put these stupid ass rumors to rest because at the end of the day, it's just nothing but bullshit and just rumors that people are just like digging up. With the drama from the slumber party, I wanted to go ahead and mend fences between Sean and Mikey the best way I possibly can. Okay. Well, besides that, mm -hmm. it's more to it because when I come around, yeah. He act like I'm. He doesn't see me. Well, yeah, well, he act shady. You know what I'm saying? And well, we'll it's like that. we're we gonna be. I just don't want Sean to feel like this is gonna be a fight because it's not. In the same space, why not just have a mutual understanding? We want to make sure things are cool. I right? just want to know why. I notice that you know I'm trying to talk to him, I'm trying to speak to him. He's kind of ignoring me. That also raised question. Because then when Carl told me what he told me. So you have no issue with the fact that he used to date Mikey and they live together? That ain't been a problem for you? I mean, unless you didn't know that. <laughs> I don't think he knew that girl. <laughs> it was like, hmm, well, maybe that's the reason. He doesn't have to be my friend. That's your friend. Or yeah. whatever, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. However, he will respect me. He will respect my presence. That's my biggest concern. But, um, I mean, he should be here. There he is. So I'll do the honors. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> All right. We should. Whew, pray with me, y'all. It's me, Mike. Hello. Hola. How's How are you? Oh, hey, how's uh, Welcome to, you know, Sean's house. It's a nice apartment. Hey. Oh, how are you? It's good to see you. Oh, uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, Want to make sure it's okay to hug you. It's okay. Oh, oh handshake, okay. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Was a look on his face of, like, he ready for anything to happen. Oh, let's have a seat. Go ahead, make you stuff take my shoes out? Um, no, you don't got to take your shoes No, you should be fine. Phone. I wanted to get you guys both together in the same space um, to discuss a few things. There's some tension in the room, specifically from Sean's end. 
I want to be the mediator to make sure that your point gets across to firmly and your point gets across to firmly. Shane Brandon plays mediator. He's kind of like, you know, I want to try to resolve the situation between my man, my boyfriend, and my friend, my roommate. So well, I'm going to make it quick. Okay. Um, since me and Brandon have been dating, um, I've noticed you've been very... He let, you know, Sean goes first. Distant from me. I I speak to you. Sometimes you speak, sometimes you don't. Or when Brandon's not around, you ignore me completely. And then he goes on to say, you know, he that I'm always stand standoffish when it, when it comes to him being around. Or I don't know what that's about. Um, when we got to the party, mm -hmm. I tried to speak to you and you kind of ignored me a little bit. But it was cool. Now, when Carl brought y'all's past situation to me, it made me question, hmm, he talks, he says, you know, about how he felt, about what Carl said. Does he act like this because he still wants my man? Or I don't know what it is, but yeah, so that's why we're here today. That's my issues and my concerns. Okay. Okay. Um, sure, but it came up as very aggressive. That can be interpreted as insecurity. All I can do is apologize for coming off like I have an issue with you because I really don't have an issue with you. So I'm sitting here and I'm wondering like, you know, why is he questioning me about Brandon when Brandon wants to be with him? And it's just coming off a little insecure. I think Brandon would tell you that when you guys started dating, I was like, oh, I really like this boy. I really hope you kind of pick him that he was dating a few people. And I was like, you know, I like him. I really do like him. So as far as me keeping my distance, the way I was raised is to have respectful distance when it comes to other people's relationships. And so that's my friend and you're my friend's boyfriend. In the past, I used to make friends with my friend's boyfriends, but I got burnt in a situation not too long ago where I became friends with a good friend of mine's boyfriend and the boyfriend thought I was trying to come on to him. That was not the case. And it soured me and my friend's relationship. Brandon's not there. I don't really speak to him. And I pretty much have to explain to him based on past experiences that I've had with my friend's boyfriends, I keep my distance. So subsequently we can't work together. We don't hang out anymore. And so I don't want that to be happening again. So when you come over to the house, like, you know, I keep my distance. Um, I might say hi and bye. I might be a little aloof, but that's just because I'm trying to be respectful of y'all space and y'all situation. Now, as far as me having feelings for Brandon, that was a lifetime ago. Even though it's been maybe four, almost five years, that was a lifetime ago. I'm a completely different person now. He's a completely different person. He's a good man, but he's not good for me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I don't understand is you brought Carl around. And like then he questions, like, why would I keep bringing Carl around and stuff like that? Carl is your friend. Right. So why does your friend feel like it's okay to tell me your past with my boyfriend. And I pretty much have to defend my honor and I have to defend my decision making when it comes to Carl. The Carl that I knew before this entire situation started mm -hmm. is not the Carl I knew before this situation started. Um, I feel like he got on camera and he's feeling himself and he's showing his ass. Clear this up. Nice well, yeah, I mean, this. If that is your co-host, your friend, your ride or die, how was he riding said, for you? I said, well, was. No, notice I've spoken past hints when we talked. I mm -hmm. said before he got into the situation, he was, we don't hang, we do that show, and we get the hell on. Mm. And that's where we at. So you guys are just like working. That's just what it is it's now. Just a it's, it's, it's a professional it's situation. Because yeah. I can work with almost anybody. Notice I say almost. Yeah, I can work with almost anybody, <laughs> but I don't have to hang with them. I'm just trying to figure out what is going on with him to make him act like this. All is well. It is well. And we could continue going on and live our life. So I get a text from Mikey um, inviting me to his Halloween party. Uh, this big Halloween party that they're throwing. They've rented out a space. They're going to have it catered. They're going to have live performances. Um, and I need the RSVP as soon as possible. So I'm a rule follower. I go ahead and RSVP. So y'all, today is the day of my Halloween party, the Heavenly Hellish Ball with You Do TV. I'm working, Ebony's working, Maurice is working. Y'all, we got the venue, we got drinks, we got performers. Like, this is my first big event and I am excited. Like, this is going to make up for that hellish ass brunch that I had a couple of weeks ago. So this year, Halloween falls on a Saturday. So that means it'll, it's turn up time. I believe in giving people second chances. However, <sighs> The Halloween party. 
And uh, so we'll just see. So you can make it? No, of course not. I walked in and I came back. He's not here. So this time I do bring Freshie and you guys, so Mikey, right? He's like, oh my gosh, red carpet at eight. Don't be late, don't be late, right? He's going crazy about this party. Literally, we get there at like, I don't know, 9, 8.45. <laughs> you know who's not there? I don't know. I mean, yeah. We got a sticker shop for the second that look. We hope that more people come. Right about here. And we hope Mike can't ride to his own show. <laughs> And in my mind, it's just like, why are you going so crazy about red carpet that first of all isn't even there and I'm late? And why are you going so crazy about uh, everybody being punctual when you're not even there? So where are you, Mikey? Why aren't you at your own party? Where's the red carpet? Me, of course me, I came maybe, you know, a few minutes late. And as I'm getting there, there's no one here. Where is everyone? Including Mikey. I'm surprised people are here though, honestly. I didn't think nobody was coming. Really? So I'm glad. That's because Ebony is over it. So of course I go with my girl Lacey and my girl Freshy. We all get together. Um, we have, we take shots. Yeah. There we go. That's my good yeah. side. All right, guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Mikey arrives, you know, I give her her hugs and stuff. Girl, where you been? Wait, 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 w
and it's not going as I planned it to go. Yeah. So I'm angry and nervous at the same time, and my chest really fucking hurts. Why your chest hurt? Because like, I've been wanting shit to go a certain way. Right, right, right. Down. Like, I didn't want this to be like my last event or whatnot. Yeah. Supposed to start at 8 o'clock. Um, and I'm not starting until 9.30. I get there, the red carpet's not set up. Uh, the photographer isn't there yet. I mean, everybody's mixing and mingling and stuff, and I see some guests have arrived. And it's just, it's not going the way that I wanted it to go. And I'm also feeling like this fire in my chest. And Smokey, I'm really tired of giving people opportunities and putting them on, and they're coming to be real disrespectful, and it's starting to piss me off. Although people can kind of tell something is up, they're looking at my face, and they said that I seem angry. And y'all, it's just getting harder and harder to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are people here who show that. No, no, let me tell you. Most of y'all, most of y'all, I love, and I'm so grateful that y'all came. But maybe one or two of y'all, I'm feeling absolute contempt for. Uh, Mikey was, seemed like he was trying to figure out what was going on and who was all supposed to be there and what it, he's, I feel like he was still trying to get it to come together, but also kind of dealing with the realization that this was not gonna be what he had wanted it to be. Yeah, I can do that for you. Uh, online. Yeah, I don't, yeah. you know, I, I never have a problem supporting you. You always pour into me, I pour into you. Thank you. Uh, well, no that. that's how it's supposed to be. But enjoy yourself. I'm okay. Don't let this, you know. Don't let it get to you. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna play. Of course, you know, I see Chris. Chris is there. Chris, so we, I pull him outside like, look, we need to talk about this real quick. So I, so I need to step out for Why a second. Why ain't nobody it's a lot. here, though? Like, I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out, like... Yeah, I kind of need a moment to step outside with Carl and just kind of like... You showed up late. Right. This is definitely giving the brunch, bitch. First of all, you had this in my apartment that you called a brunch, but you know, I digress. No, so facts. Is... I thought I was going to be walking into a fully erect party. This is given, so at least it was an event, you know, an event hall or something. I mean, time. you could tell something was going on. Well, I think Ebony is the reason why we got even got people here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I needed like an extra day of planning. They promoted late. Yeah. Like I had people that I invited, but they already made plans because y'all didn't promote this shit like a week before. Right, right, right. I think Mikey is super dope and amazing at what he does. He's an amazing writer, an amazing interviewer. He can really work a room. I think event planning definitely takes a special kind of muscle. And I don't even know if that's Mikey's thing. Yeah, but, and then it's got a, it's a competitive night. It's Halloween. Like, you got to bring it if you want people to stay. Hey, everybody talking about leaving already. Ain't nobody, right. ain't number six people here. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah, come about leaving. Like, how they leaving? Mm. But I'll be trying to be messy, but bitch, you go, you, you, you made this event sound like it was more than what it was, and then here we are, there's eight people here. Yeah. Now, now I gotta, my, I gotta work the crowd. Who are we performing for? Hmm? There's no one here. For Tramiel, you know, I want to see my, my, my friend in his element, so he's out there. He's performing. <laughs> And I realized something is going wrong. My heart is beating faster and faster and faster. I can get to a point where I can hear it in my ears. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at Tremel's face, but he's looking like past us. And he's, he's not really singing. He looks more, you know, a feeling of concern comes across his face. So I'm up there. I lose consciousness. And he just looked really out of it and unresponsive. And people started like trying to pull his jacket off of him and trying to lift him up and stuff. And face. So I'm up there like, you know, I'm partying. I'm in there be like, hey, party over here. The people were still partying and the music was still playing. And, and I turn around. <laughs> Mikey on the floor. I don't think people were really taking it seriously and it was actually kind of sad. In the midst of us trying to figure out what is happening with Mikey, somebody else over here falls out. What is going on? Is it a carbon monoxide leak? Is it some demons in here one on the bow? I don't know what's going on. At this point, I'm scared. Finally getting to the party. I'm a little late. What am I about to walk into? I didn't know he was going all out with the, you know, decoration and everything. I mean, I come there and there's an ambulance sitting outside of the building, so. And the drinks must be fire, like this. <laughs> the bartender is on it, bitch. She got motherfuckers passing hot, okay? okay I'm so confused. 
So lo and behold, I walk into Michael. Passed out on the ground, child. So I'm leaving now, bitch. They didn't call the fire truck. They didn't call it's ambulance pickup. Cops coming up. It's a whole frenzy now. Now we. They said they blamed it on the edible. <laughs> so what was supposed to have been a fun night of, of performances and a Halloween party and shindig has ended with Mikey in the back of an ambulance truck. When you're dealing with the web life, it's like you have so much going on. I, to add to that, my co-host for The Corporate Mouth, Tramiel, has dropped a chart, chart top an album. He's acting, he's making moves, he's booked, he got things going on. So with that being said, we're naturally kind of neglecting The Corporate Mouth. So with that being said, today we're gonna sit down and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna actually do a live review of Chasing Atlanta today. Are you so, nervous you know, or something? It's been a few days uh -huh. um, since, um, the Halloween party and your performance. I just wonder how you feel about the Halloween party. So naturally, we always talk about our problems, what's going on, um, what we've been up to. Because sometimes, it, us both being so busy, we don't get to catch up with each other as much. You know, all the drama's going on with me and this new group of people that I've been dealing with lately. Honestly, it was <laughs> not uh, as put together as I would have hoped. You would have talked, yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to go third. You were supposed oh, to go fourth. Oh, I said, at least you got to perform. <laughs> Even that part was kind of like, damn, I wish I kind of sort of didn't go. I mean, Mikey passed out like right in the middle of my shit. Yeah, I, I know. And I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know whether I was supposed to keep performing or was I supposed to stop or no, what was really it. going on you because I just, and uh, you know, I, I'm professional. So I kept going, kept yeah, saying, you mean, know, and so, so I went to go off. check with the, uh, ah, I'm about to fuck it up. And this bitch on the floor, like we saw. That's how me and Froggy we saw your face. And I'm looking like the fuck going on. So I turn around. I'm looking like what the fuck going on here. It was your party. You came late. Then you said you mind you. I had brought one of my friends there and told him that he does music. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna bring you here now because you know we're supposed to have some music execs that's supposed to be here and all that good stuff. Right. They were where were the music execs? Because I knew everybody that was there. There was only ten people there. So that being said, <laughs> I knew everyone that was there, I, um, and none of them bitches are music is there. So I'm trying to figure out what's when it comes to certain things that he tells me. I just, I don't really like. I don't really be betting on it. My thing with Mikey is like, if you throw on a Halloween party, you be like, bitch, I'm gonna throw a Halloween party. I want y'all to have fun. Come here and do what y'all need to do, and just have a good time. I'm cool with that. For because we're friends, I'm looking at him and I'm like, okay, so I'm inviting other artists that's serious about their craft to this event. That's true. And they're not there, and it's like, bitch. Now they're looking at me like I'm a liar, and I'm looking at you like, first of all, you're not here on time, and Young Miami, Atlantic, and Capital and Interscope <laughs> Records aren't here. He so did not what, say Young what Miami. Gonna, don't... What am I gonna do now? Because as of right now. As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to, hey, Mikey events, he's two for two. Everything is just tor terrible. Have you even talked to him about it? Like, um, have you told him, like, he shouldn't do that because it really, like, puts all of us in weird predicaments, like, when he does I shit like that? I talked to him the other day to make sure. First of all, I had to make sure that the fallout thing was even real. So I did go to his house, and he was in bed. So that literally kind of changed me a little bit because I honestly realized that it was it wasn't a publicity stunt because y'all know you know how he does. Oh, you know she an actor, so I felt like she said, you know what? Let me. Oh, uh, uh. That's how I took. Exactly. I'm like, bitch. Now she feel like she got to direct the picture somewhere else because you couldn't deliver all the shit that you promised us that was gonna be here. And go back and see her. She is legitly hurt. Everything. Then you got Brandon, of course. You, you know that's a homegirl boyfriend. Whatever she want to call it, <laughs> and of course she gonna come in there like, yeah, he really got answer that girl. I'm not, letting, I'm not want to talk to you because you, you anything that bitch say, you like, yeah, and I'm like, girl, you always say yeah. To everything trying to she say, say she her, he, he a follower or something. You no, know, he ain't gonna say too much because you know she's always gonna have her back because you know she not paying rent over there. She's she not for free, oh. and she can't bite the hand that feeds her. So you know. I ain't never heard about this. Did you hear about it? Heard about what? Mikey and Brandon fucking. Uh, they told me that they never fucked. This is what they were sending to us. Girl, no. Look at it. <laughs> Say, listen, look. No. So, what I'm asking what's going on. And we brought, I brought it up amongst a group of friends. Why would you do that? We're all friends, bitch. What's the problem? 
Pablo. Do everybody know he do that? Well, except for the lesbians, but you know, they a little different from us. You know, Lacey and Freshie, this is, you know, you already know the lesbians and gays are completely separate. Yeah, because, let's like, see, it wasn't a surprise that he was doing OnlyFans, because, bitch, everybody knows she's real sexual. But at the end, <laughs> you don't want to see it? No, no I do not want to see but it. At, Thank you. We Sorry. know she's a sexual being, but my thing is that we thought that, you know, she was on Noah's Ark, child. She was doing, like, you know, more HBO Showtime. You know, she was she had made it. And then this gets sent to my inbox. And I'm looking like, <laughs> but, bitch, I just want to know, was times hard for her? Like, what was going on? Have you talked to him about it? We did, but she got so upset. Why? I don't. I don't know. Well, maybe she doesn't want to talk about it. With How? You. You, maybe she don't trust you. Chow, she busting it open. Girl, listen. She busting it I open. Don't wanna see that shit. Like, how is that my fault? It's public information. I might need to dial it back some sometimes when it comes to this group because sometimes I may be a little bit much. Yeah, we were talking about Bosley Pot because you know, you know, Mike, your girl Mikey, child, everything. She wanted everybody to fuck a fat man. So, oh. <laughs> with that being said, child, <laughs> she wants fat men to be it. If fat men ain't it, bitch, she's just mad about it. So, it's this big thing. Bitch, so I'm thinking like, well, bitch, she's naked too. So that's, I, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm glad you're embracing your body. And let's talk about thick men. Like, I was, you know, I look body and shit too. But bitch, you know, at the end of the day, everybody might not want a little more cushion for the pushing. And you gotta be okay with that. I mean, everybody likes what they like. They like And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I have, my inbox is full at this point in time. So okay. at this point, like, I'm not as big as you know her or some of the girls she may be promoting for end of the day i have a little weight on me and at the end of the day but i have no problem getting to me she's really fucking pushing for the thick men yeah and we really, thin, we know and that. people don't understand the thin line between thick and fat there's a thin line very thin line it's a thin line <laughs> tramiel knows me better than everybody in this group so with that being said, I have to take in consideration when he says that I am a real person. Everybody knows that whatever I'm thinking, I'm going to say. And I have to agree with your man. Maybe I shouldn't be as open or as so vocal with the group of people because they may not be able to handle that as much. So I can be a little ghetto. And as always, thank you for your outpour of love and support. You're watching Red Wife.